were a couple games back at the time, and you're going to hit in the two hole. It's like, all right, awesome. Um, I get, I'm, I'm, we're driving here, and I'm telling myself, I'm going to swing at the first pitch no matter what. Obviously, for those of you who know me, that's usually never a problem. <laughs> but for some reason, I get in the box and I'm facing Joe Mays, and he throws me a 92 mile an hour four seam fastball right down the middle, and I took it. That's when I knew there was a problem. <laughs> I ended up striking out a couple times that day, and I went over. I went. I think I went over my first two games, and it felt like I was over for two weeks. And uh, Jim Fergosi, God rest his soul, he says, "I don't know if this kid's ready." Oh, after two games, that was quick. Third game, uh, get a couple hits, score the game-winning run on an infield ground ball, and Jim says, "Man, this kid's going to be something else." So, <laughs> that's baseball for you. That's managers, isn't it? Yeah. Why yeah. Was there a coach, or was there some players who you idolized, who you kind of mocked your game after? How did you become the pitcher that you became? Uh, from a coach standpoint, Mel Queen, obviously, for me, was the guy that, awesome. uh, you know, he built relationships, and then he also taught me how to self-coach. And I think that was one of the things that helped me the most. Players, it was easy. It was Steve and Morris. Um, you know, Dave and I got to play the last year of his career here, and then he came back in 98 when he made the team as a coach. Mm -hmm. People forget about that. And then, obviously, Jack Morris. I grew up in Detroit, so getting a chance to be in the same locker room with those two guys, see the way they compete, the way they prepare, and, and the way they handle themselves on the field, off the field, uh, those were probably my biggest three. Buck was talking about what you, what you accomplished in that week. I had a few hits myself with the bases loaded, but I never did anything which you did, and you accomplished it in a week. Talk about what your mindset is, what you're thinking about when you're strolling to the plate, knowing the situation and knowing what's happening. You're not thinking about hit a home run, it just happens. What, ha what was going on? Well, you know, um, that was also my first walk-off ever. Anyway, so it was like I did it in big fashion. But, um, you know, you're just trying to... Yeah, Your out of body experience. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what happened, man. Yeah. It was it was it was such There's a cool no feeling. There, and right? uh, just getting home plate and getting soaked with Gatorade and, and uh, it's, it's that stuff that you uh you grew up wanting to do. You know, that was your backyard fantasy and uh, I was thankful it came true. The second one, you guys go into the bottom of the ninth inning, it's ten to four. The Angels are putting it on you pretty good. What was the attitude in the dugout? I know you got a home run from Pilar early on, and then things started to unravel, and they brought in Bud Norris, and then ahead of you, Morales gets a walk to load the bases, and you got to be thinking, oh my God, this is another chance within the same week. What was it like in that dugout at that time? Well, I, you know, it was, like you said, we were down by a lot of runs, and you just see that we just slowly just kept getting on base, lining waste, just pull along the inning, and. Um, you know, and the chance you just, you just almost just saw it Don't happen. Don't get it on like yourself. It's unraveling, and it's like, I'm like, I got a chance to do this again. And I have, uh, I had a lot of history with Bud Norris, and, and uh, I laid off a couple of pitchers, and I got one, and I didn't miss it again. So it was, it was, uh, it was a great feeling. I can still see your face as you were looking down the line to see if there was going to be fair or foul. It was a great moment for everybody watching, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah we got to go home. We weren't there for extra innings. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, it was nice to be one of the wins. That was great. With him in New York, Curtis Granderson. Tell us about Curtis as a player and as a person and what you're expecting from his presence on this ball club this year. Uh, Curtis Granderson is uh, as professional as you can get um, on the field, off the field. He's, he's really probably one of the best guys in baseball you know, that I've ever been around. So. Um, He's, you know, one of the greatest. But that, uh, in time, you guys will see that. Uh, on the field, he's a guy has got good pop, um, can hit the ball out of the, out of the park, did it a lot. Um, he's got some good speed, can play defense. So um, I'm definitely excited to have him. Glad to have him on board. He's going to be a great addition and, and hopefully uh, help us win some ball games.